car behind me like beeped their horn a little bit. I'm like, why are they beeping? <laughs> Sam bringing a friend to Labor Ward. I was a bit confused until I looked down to see I still had my bag. I ring him and say, hey, my water's broken, need to go to the hospital. Having had zero contractions, like literally nothing is happening. But she didn't tell me that. Welcome to the Unhelpful Parenting Podcast. Where we share the real, the raw and the ridiculousness of parenthood. So if you're a mum who's done the school run in her pyjamas, avoiding eye contact with everyone. Or a dad who constantly gets kicked and punched awake every morning. Then you're in the right place. Well, welcome to episode five. Hello. Yes, hello. I'm Beck. I am Sam. And we are parents of three young kids. I, and I've nailed my name. You have. I know. If you if you watch back the last few episodes, Sam. Or the trailer. Like, or the trailer. Sam like stalls on his name. You're like, oh, I've forgotten who I am. <laughs> I don't know. It's just one of those. I, yeah. I'm not used to introducing myself. Yeah. I know. So. Well, I think the second episode, we didn't even introduce ourselves at all. And I was like, oh, whoops. I hope. Yeah. Yeah, that's us. Them. Hello. <laughs> bye. I mean, not bye yet. <laughs> Stick around, please. Yeah. Um, right. So today we are talking, the main theme of today is sleep deprivation. Um, ah, welcome to parenting. Yeah, something every parent can relate to. I think if you're a new parent listening to the show, some of the things about like the toddler years and the older school years probably don't apply to you yet. So this is one, this is a nice easy one that every parent. Or yeah, especially if you're a new parent. Even pregnant mums, because like the sleep deprivation doesn't start when the baby comes. The sleep deprivation starts once when you hit that. When you're too fat to roll over. <laughs> yeah, yeah I know. so uncomfortable. Or you got to sleep on your side you all the time. you got to sleep on your side instead of your back or your stomach or however you used to sleep. flipping pillow. <laughs> I was so glad to get rid of that pillow. We haven't got rid of it. I still have it. We don't use it. It's not in the bed. <laughs> not when you're around. <laughs> <laughs> I love Sounds that like pillow. Sounds like it made an appearance <laughs> last week while I was away. Oh, it's so comfy. Um, so I had a moment this morning and I was like, in the car, I was like, are you serious? This happens this morning of all mornings. So like sleep deprived. Like what we've all had, mean? we've all had like, well, I hope we've all had the moments where we've like sat at traffic lights that have turned green. Like it's been a red light, you're sitting there, it's turned green and you've just, you're dazed and you're, mm -hmm. yeah. I had that like on steroids. So the light was green mm -hmm. and I drove up and stopped at it and I could hear <laughs> like a car behind, like as I was pulling up to it, the car behind me like beeped their horn a little bit and I'm like, why are they beeping? And then they sped around me and I was like, freaking oh my gosh, light. it's a green light. <laughs> I was like, you I did not dork. sleep well last night. <laughs> You dork. Oh, uh, yeah. And that was And then one. she wonders why all four corners of the car have little scrapes on them. Oh, uh, they're not all mine. No, they are. They are not all mine. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, my car is obviously the family car. It has all the snacks, all the food in it, all the scrapes. I know and... what the kids have eaten the last three months because it's all over the floor. <laughs> Like you, you get the car seat out of the car and you tip it upside down and it's like all the snacks start falling. It's just on the floor too. There's yeah. still chips on there. I've been there. For, I don't know how long yeah. they've been there for. Yeah. I don't know how people do like no food in the car. Surely you can't do that with kids. Like you tried to decree that when you got your new car and you were like, there are no snacks in this car. But even that I think has been bent because they're hungry. And when they're they hungry, had, they go feral. They had mm. corn thins in my car the other day. <laughs> how and did it was that go? very strict on no crumbs. Yeah. No dropping food on the floor and it's stuck. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, talking that sleep deprivation because it's real. We're in the thick of it at the moment. Um, I've got to say like – Are we? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I am in the thick of it at the moment. <laughs> Sam's now in the doghouse. Um, <laughs> no, we – I've, have been pretty blessed. Both our boys have been fairly good sleepers, like from an early age. They're good sleepers. They just don't like sleeping night. alone. Yeah. Well, no, even that they they're like we really shouldn't. We don't complain too much. No, they are. They're good. But they hit the phases like um, Hartley, who's now the two and a half year old. He hit that four four month sleep regression, and that just hit us like a freight train. Like he just wouldn't sleep. Ever. I don't remember it. Yeah, I well, you probably blocked it, it out memory. like from trauma. Um, and right now, so Kit is six months old, and we think it must be teeth. Like that's the only it's thing teeth. we've got left to put it down to. I've even yeah, we started him on solids. Well, he just to make likes sure he's cuddles not, every yeah hour. Yeah. Oh. Just sleep, child. It's like it's like the highs and lows of parenting. It's like, oh, I love you so much. I could cuddle you forever. And then it's like, <laughs> go to sleep. <laughs> Why are we 
don't you sleep? Yes. Uh, so, um, yeah, the main main theme of today is sleep deprivation. So we've got some confessionals that are our own that we have to share to get to the sleep deprivation stories. Mm. And then we've got um, a few sleep deprivation stories that we've had sent in. So, and there's some, there's some great moments in there, some that have made me go, oh, okay, I'm not the only parent. And that's the whole point of this podcast is to be like, we're laughing together because this parenting journey is hilarious. Yeah. Well, hilarious, if you don't laugh, hilarious. you cry. <laughs> hey, that's my motto. <laughs> I stole it today. Yeah, I know. Um, so let's have get you got? Into, oh, the what the meme? Yeah, we can't get into the confessional until you've had your moment to. Because apparently last week you forgot about it. <laughs> you remembered. It's okay. So Sam, if he's friends with you on social media, you'll very quickly have him in your inbox all the time because Whoa. he is I, the sharer of memes and reels, and it's true. Like. He was often, he'll come to me at the end of the day and he's like, have you been, have you watched what I sent you? And I'm like, I have like 20 reels sitting there to watch. So that's why this has become a bit of a thing. This is one of his outlets for the parenting. You can share with, share with our mums and dads what's been hitting you this week. Yeah. I like this one. And this is a pretty good one. It's at a car one. It's like the kid's like, mum, watch this. Watch this. Mum, mama, mum, watch this. You're not looking. Mum, look. Look at me. You're not looking. Me merging onto the highway. <laughs> oh, my, yes. It's like, look at me, mum. You're like, oh, they do that to I'm me all driving. the time. Like, I'm literally like going, like trying to get out of the roundabout at school. Like, it, the school traffic is crazy. You've got to, like, literally, if there's just a tiny gap, you've got to kind of just go for it. And they're like, mum, can I have my water bottle? Can I have my snacks? Can I? I'm like, I cannot, I'm not taking my hands off the steering wheel right now. Like, yeah. Live on the edge. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're out here sleep deprived, driving don't the kids screaming in the back seat. I'm like stopping at traffic lights. Stopping at traffic lights, we don't have to stop out apparently. Genius. So, um, that's so, right. That's the opposite. I look at. I had a spade where I was looking at the traffic lights ahead. I would see green, and would run red lights. Yes. I only did it like twice. And then I realised I had sleep apnea, so, you know, that's a whole other story. <laughs> yes. Which we can touch on another day. Yes. Sam's probably one of the only dads who can kind of try and claim that he's as tired as mum after. Not anymore. Not anymore. No, you don't get to do that anymore. But those early days. It's good fun. Yes. Um, so let's, to get started, mm. head into this parenting confessional. So today's confessional, we are, we'll probably both share it because it is one of Sam's, but we both have um, <laughs> very different perspectives and insights into what happened. It's one and of to be mine. Honest, yeah. And to be honest, it's almost a pre-parenting confessional because we weren't quite parents at that point. So um, um, I am going to share the story um... of <laughs> Sam bringing a friend to Labor Ward. <laughs> It was bring a friend to birthday. Yeah. No, um, it wasn't. So look. When I went into labor with Mackenzie, I had I had the um what is it, the movie kind of version of going into labor. So my waters broke. The movie it wasn't the movie version because it wasn't like oh it felt yes, like the, yeah, okay. it felt like it because my waters broke and I like and that was the beginning of everything. Like it wasn't like, oh, I'm like zero symptoms and then all of a sudden my water just breaks and I'm like, cool having a baby. So, um, and I was out with one of my best mates. Yeah, so this was dinner, like, I think 10 30, 11 o'clock at night, having a boy's night. We just, back then we were young enough to still eat Maccas without dying the next day. At 11 oh, o'clock at night. <laughs> at 11 o'clock at night. Yeah. <laughs> Can't do Heartburn that and death the next day. Anyway, um, we just done that. We literally just poured, like we spiked our drinks a little bit to have, enjoy some drinks with some, I think it was like JD or I don't know, something, whatever he had in the cupboard. So I've gotten into bed going, oh, I think I need to go to the bathroom, gone to the bathroom. My water's broken in the bathroom, thankfully. And I've gone, oh, okay, rang the midwife and she's like, come in, we'll check you out. Um, we'll let you know what to do, but come in, we'll check you out. And so I ring Sam and I'm like, hey, babe, um, my water's broken. Just letting you know the midwife wants me to come into the hospital. So you're going to have to come home. 
that's all I said. Now, Sam is the sort of person that when we found out we were pregnant, when we were deciding to have a baby, he's the person that researches everything. So he knew probably more about birth than I did. At if you that know stage. Enneagrams, I'm a six wing five. So. so he loves the information and goes down. I go down, down rabbit holes. Goes down rabbit holes, goes down research tangents. And so all like all through pregnancy, he'd sent me all these things. We'd done the courses. He knew how birth was like, there's no way birth is meant to go, but he, you understood the process. Kind of, not really, but. So I ring, I ring him and say, hey, my water's broken, need to go to the hospital. Having had zero contractions, like literally nothing is happening. Ten but minutes- she didn't tell me that. <laughs> right. Disclaimer. <laughs> Ten minutes later, I get a no, phone no, no. call. All I get is, oh, hey, babe, my waters are broken. They want me to come in. That's it. <laughs> so I'm like, chill. holy like- crap, game's on. Here we go. And then I'm going, but what if it's too urgent? What if I need to get dropped to hospital? So then I'm like. (laughs) (laughs) So 10 minutes later, I get a phone call. I've gone, okay, we're having a baby in the next like day or so. She decides to do the freaking dishes. So I'm doing the dishes um, because I'm like, I don't want to come home to a dirty sink. So um, I get this phone call from Sam being like, I'm five minutes away. Make sure the bags are at the door, blah, blah, blah. I've got Toby with me. (laughs) Yeah, because he's going to drop us off. In case I don't have time to park, <laughs> so we can go in and he can park the car. Except at that stage, Toby. Nothing was happening. Nothing was happening, and Toby didn't have a driver's license. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's, that's a minor. Um, he's driving in a car. He so would have anyway, been, been driving in a car park. Yeah. Not a road. <laughs> so Sam turns up, I come out, and I'm like, oh, hi, Toby. <laughs> We're going to the hospital. I guess you're coming too. Toby's part of the family. He is. He's a very close friend. We love Toby. Um, But I wasn't planning on having any friends at Labor Ward. So anyway, we went into the hospital. I wasn't either. I got checked out. But you were so chill. Well, I was like, well, Toby's here. What do we do? I can't leave him in the car. (laughs) (laughs) So he came. So he came. Um, And so, yep, came all the way. We brought... Brought him in with us. Oh, came in. Yeah, came in and then the doctor was Nothing like, okay, was we're going to do so the check figured. now. So I was like, all right, you're out of the room. And then you left with him. <laughs> and went and stood out in the hallway yes, with I did. him. I didn't know what was going to happen. And, yeah. I thought it was like, it's lady time. I'm going to we'll go out. <laughs> it's baby time. This is you. It wasn't be baby there. time. You were so chill. Um, Nothing yes, was happening. So Sam's confession is that he thought it was a great idea to bring a friend to birth suite. <laughs> Luckily, yeah, I didn't go into labour then. We, we had to go home. We dropped literally Toby nothing home happened until like we the next day we at like three thirty p.m. Yes, yes, she wasn't born till the afternoon the next day. So that's Sam's confession. You just didn't sleep that night. I got plenty of sleep. Yes, and then I've pretty much finished. I think I was playing Spyro on the PlayStation. I got the relaunch yeah. on the PS4, and I finished it that day while Beck was having contractions. Yes, so and our house was getting renovated. <laughs> It was or our fun. unit. So that's Sam's confession. And the reason we had to share that confession is to kind of give some context around how my sleep deprivation story happened. So waters broke at, what, 10 o'clock at night on a Thursday Thursday night. Yep. And so we got sent home, but I still didn't sleep that night. I was excited. We would have gotten excited. home, about, we would have gotten home about one I did o'clock. not know what was coming. I was so excited. Like, I'm how did like, Toby get home? We dropped him on the way. We dropped him yep. home? Okay. <laughs> I was like, did he drive? We were so, I I know, was so excited. Him. So I didn't sleep and then my contraction started at early hours in the morning. So yeah, about three or four o'clock. So zero sleep. Had Mackenzie three Meanwhile, o'clock Friday I slept afternoon. Perfectly. Yes. Had well. Mackenzie three o'clock Friday afternoon. Mm. So then Friday night I was wired. Like I'm there holding my baby just being like, I've just had a bit. I was I was on a super high after having Mackenzie. Like I know some people are exhausted. Some people don't want people around. I was like, bring everyone here to see my baby. Like no, you were. she's amazing. I've look at this thing we've done. She's so beautiful. Everyone has to see her. Um, but I was like adrenaline high. So I literally, I think I held her. She slept all of that night and I held her and pretty much just stared at her. I think I only slept an hour or two. Same. Cause I was just cause of the freaking <laughs> bloody couch that they put you on. That's a bed. <laughs> the most uncomfortable thing. 
Oh, ever. <laughs> ever. All the blokes, boo-hoo. all the dads. <laughs> we gave birth and you're like, oh, public, the bed. all the dads <laughs> will attest that freaking bed in the public hospital rooms. That's the chair that you flatten out to a bed. You're really not meant to complain because not all public hospitals have Feels beds. like, well, it doesn't matter. Feels like they could still get something that doesn't feel like a lumbar re whatever with a massive freaking piece of wood up your back. <laughs> oh, you a little bit uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I was. <laughs> so, yeah, so that was, so we had going into labor night, had baby high adrenaline mm. night. And like the midwives came in through the night and were like, Beck, you really should go to sleep. Like your baby will sleep a lot tonight. Usually the first night they sleep a lot. Yeah, they failed to like, tell me that that's because the second night they don't sleep at all. Well, I was like, please get some sleep because one of us <laughs> needs to and I'm not. So night number three of no sleep um, was the cluster feeding night where she just fed all night. And what I had done in my naivety was sent you home because I was like, you complained about that bed so much. And I was like, last night was easy. It was fine. They're like we're great at this parenting thing. You go home, have sleep, come back. And I had a great sleep. You had a great sleep mm-hmm. and woke up to a message being, Hey, I think I woke up at like, cause you were like, don't worry about me. Come in when you're ready. And I was like, okay. So I actually set my alarm for like, cause I was going to get up at like six or whatever and then come in. But I was like, no, I'll wake up at seven. Kid free. Oh, those are the days. Um, <laughs> and woke up to yeah to a message from you going, "Hey, um, don't rush, but when are you coming in?" <laughs> AKA rush, 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 rush. <laughs> so I rocked up with a chai latte at about I don't know, I probably got there about eight thirty. And I think you were just sitting on the couch, eyes red as heck. Massive bags and crying, <laughs> holding the baby. <laughs> it's being like she has not slept. So that night, I think I got maybe an hour. One of the midwives felt bad for me and came and like took her and took her out of the room and took her for a walk for a good like 40, 45 minutes. So I could just get some sleep. So at this stage, where like she didn't ring me to come in. Um, at this stage, we're about day three, four, day four. Of being sure. awake, pretty much. I'd had a couple of two-hour sleep blocks mm. and I was hitting the point where I did not know what was real and what wasn't. Like, I was full hallucinating. Yeah. And you might have to tell the rest of this story because I know bits, but, like, even now I'm like, I barely remember. Like, I just it's remember. It's kind of still a blur to me too. But. I was lying in bed and I think I felt like I was dreaming, but you were like, no, you were awake and talking. And well, no, you weren't. You were sleep talking. Like you were you were asleep, but you were like, you know how you sleep walking, you're awake, but you're asleep. It's that. So like, you would freak out. You'd literally like every whatever. You'd wake up and you'd be like, where's the baby? And you'd be like feeling around the bed and go, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, where's the baby? And you'd be like pushing oh, Forgetting me. that I'd put her down Great. in her bassinet. Yes. Yeah. Looking and you'd be the, waking me up moments, and I'm like. Because that happened with Hartley too. Like I'm just like, being what like, what the heck the are you gone? talking about? They're in the flipping, no, they're not, they're in the bed. No, they're, she's right there. It's like, <laughs> I can see her. Um, but the, the main one that we remember and we talk about is I was. In my head, you we, to were at a, my memory. we were at a we were at a club or a, like wherever, and the Red Hot Chili Peppers were playing downstairs. And so, in my head, I was like, "I'll stay up here with the baby. You go downstairs and meet the like meet them, and then we'll swap. You come back up." And like, I'm having this full conversation with Sam. I'm like, "You go meet the Red Hot Chili Peppers. They're downstairs. You go downstairs and meet them." And I'm, I will, <laughs> and then, then we can swap and you come back and Sam's like, I've just woken him up out of sleep being like, babe, you need to go now. It's your turn. It's your turn to go downstairs and meet the red hot chili peppers. And, and he's here like, I am in like a sleep hungover going, what? <laughs> he's like, what the hell? It's 3am in the morning. Like, <laughs> he's like, yeah, what? Anyway. So that was our sleep deprivation. Like you, We had many conversations with you. I sleep, am. And I'm, I'm normally like, a sleep talker anyway. So that was like. Yeah, that was a key, like, trigger moment. 
But um, we got you guys. We don't want to just talk about ourselves. We've been. I was going to say, stop. We've talking been talking about, about ourselves a little oh, bit heck. here now. So let's read. It's not all about you. Oh. Um, I think I've got the first one. Yeah. All right. Once before, I had kids of my own. <laughs> I was babysitting my baby niece for an overnight sleepover. I woke up in the morning feeling refreshed and amazed. There was no crying. It was feeling pretty chuffed, thinking that parenthood would be a breeze. <sighs> what happened? I turned and told my husband this, and with bags under his eyes, he said, are you kidding? I've been up like three, four times with her through the night. You slept through all of her crying. Oh. Guilty. <laughs> That's always the way. There's always a light sleeper and a heavy sleeper. Although I feel like as it's gone on, you've become the heavy sleeper, and I've although oh, I'm still the heavy sleeper sometimes. I'm the one that gets up to all the kids. Now that I'm actually sleeping again and finding yes. REM sleep, I feel like I'm the heavy sleeper again. Yes. Yes. But I will admit there's been a few times where I play asleep. <laughs> <laughs> you play asleep, I play, oh, what, there's a poo in your nappy? Oh, no. <laughs> I guess Daddy found that one. I didn't yeah. know it was there. So I guess we, like, repay each other. Story of your life. Anyway, your turn. Okay. So this is this is a gold one because it's been it's an oldie so it's been 25 years since this happened but i've never forgotten it <laughs> my eldest was in year 1 and my youngest son was 3 years old i can't remember why i was so tired but i was i mean you're a mum <laughs> we're all tired tired enough to not wake up from a supposedly quick shut eye while the 3 year old napped i was eventually woken by the phone ringing it was a call from the school well after pickup time, uh -oh. wondering why they had an anxious and teary five-year-old on their hands who thought he'd been abandoned. Uh -oh. How embarrassing. Poor kid. I got there as fast as I could after shoving the still sleeping three-year-old in the car. The school staff were not happy. Mr. Five-year-old was actually scarred a bit by it and needed constant reassurance going forward for years that yes, mum will remember to pick you up. He even brings it up now and then as an adult. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's yep. I mean, we've had Mackenzie. She's almost finished her first term of prep, and that's been one of my big fears. Is oh my gosh, I cannot forget to pick her up. Like yeah, because that will she will not go to school if you do no, that. No, and I would yeah, yeah. Drop offs already hard enough, but oh, it'd be so it's not easy. Too bad. It would be so easy at the moment because we're so sleep deprived. I can sleep through almost anything. I'm not normally a heavy sleeper, but. When I'm sleep deprived, I can sleep through anything. So I would, I would be scared to. I don't get to sleep. I was gonna say you don't nap. Well, because well, we've got do, two I'm other children that don't nap at the same time. If you do, I'm around. Yes. So, um, but that that is a big fear. That like, oh, the anxiety in me rose with that one. I was like, oh, I know exactly that fear of. Oh my gosh, I do not want to forget my child. I'm just too busy. I get buried in in like work, and then go, you're oh, allowed to oh, like. Pick up is my job. So years ago, when my baby was only a few weeks old, we were still only sleeping one to two hours at a time and nursing all through the night. Milk on tap. The sun came up, and my husband left for work. It got to around nine a.m., and I was still trying to get this baby to sleep. Just as I got her down, there was a knock at the door. It was a guy wanting to talk to me about solar or electricity or something. Oh, it's like they're my favorite, except it's the phone calls. I normally try and sell them solar back. Um, not someone I wanted to see, but I had to answer to stop him knocking so he wouldn't wake the baby. He launched into a spiel, but after a few seconds, I could see his demeanor shift and he looked uncomfortable. Uh-oh. I didn't say much and he left very quickly without me having to shut the conversation down, which was a surprise. While I wasn't sad, he left so quickly. I was a bit confused until I looked down to see I still had my boob out. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's one way to get rid of the door to door. <laughs> the people who knock on the door. <laughs> hey. <laughs> I mean, I've almost done that at the shopping centre, feeding in the parents' room. I had a mum stop me. And I would walk away. Like, yeah, I would. Put your I away. would walk away. That can only happen yeah. when you're like full sleep deprived. Proper like, sleep deprived. I would. Blurry yeah. eyed. I would do the same as he did and I would just back out. <laughs> Softly, quietly, and quickly. Be like, oops, not. <gasps> Especially now being a dad, it's like, that's a sign that the night has not gone well. <laughs> you go, okay, if you're tired enough to not even realize. What are the other signs that nights have not gone well? <laughs> hey? What are other signs nights have not gone well? 
I can't say. <laughs> Rude. <laughs> I can't say. I feel like you have to now. No. Isn't this the space for it? No. Nope. This is not the space <laughs> you, where we can talk about this. You want to be welcome time. at home later, don't you? <laughs> well, plus side of like being kicked out of the bed, which doesn't happen anymore. But I can go sleep on one of the kids' beds because they're never in it. Yeah, and I true. get some good sleep. <laughs> so, <laughs> but. Um, well. Hello. So next week we yes. are um, doing another episode. We're here every week. Um, we are going to return to the, the show. So um, we already have a couple of stories, but if you've got some, send them in. We promise we're not going to go overboard like we did the last episode. We did that. I'll try not to show any photos, but that was pretty. Yeah, we could not show those photos. Epic. That was yeah, but um, and we'll keep it kind of a bit shorter. The we'll whole do a episode won't be about poo. Yeah, we'll keep it kind of. Friendly for the people that struggle to stomach that. We'll do it. We might and we'll do, give you a bit of a warning when it's coming. We'll start so that you to can do skip the, if you need to. It'll start becoming like they're probably more like the confessional where we'll just share one or two every week. Yeah. And, or so we've got a couple, but if weeks. you've got some, because we've still got a, like Sam's still got his hectic one. I've actually got, I remembered like the trauma has kind of subsided enough that I've remembered another doozy of our own as well that I can share. Okay. So we've got a couple. Mm -hmm. um, the other segment and the question we'll probably put out this week that we want to hear from you guys is in episode one, we asked the question, what's the funniest thing your kid has said in public? But we're oh, yeah. just going to do like a from the mouth of babes segment of like, what's just the funniest thing your kid has said in general, in general. like at home. We'll, and we'll probably make from the mouth of babes a segment. A segment, I reckon. yeah. And like, because I feel like be, kids always say funny. Things. I want to hear the brutal ones too. Like, because sometimes it's not like funny, ha ha. Like funny, cute. Oh yeah, it can be. Sometimes like, it's like they've said something awful. Like oh yeah, <laughs> it's like that's not actually funny, but when it's I was hilarious. Like, when it's I was come like, out of your mouth. I know kids are brutally honest. <laughs> so if you've got those stories, they're send not, them in. They're not good for your self image. Sometimes. Yeah, we've got like we do have a few, but. We never have enough. And no, so please, enough. and if you're worried it's not going to be funny enough or good enough, don't worry. It probably is. It'll so be send fun. it in. Yeah. Do send it, it in. Um, and it's a judgment free zone. We don't ever judge or think less of parents because, my goodness, we are all here doing it together. So send in your stories. Um, if you're listening on YouTube, subscribe to our channel, like the video. If you're listening on Spotify, rate the podcast, Apple, leave us a review, like, share it with your friends, share it with your mums and dads, your mums groups, and your dads groups. And yeah, we'll see you next week. And don't forget the cute kids stories because we Beck wants to do a cute little pretty thing with cute kids doing cute things. So yeah, and we'll see you next week. See ya.